You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, how small improvements, according to my first guest, how small improvements to your smile can change your life. Uh, with us, we have Utah's cosmetic dentist, Dr. Jordan Davis. Dr. Davis, welcome to the program. Hey, thanks, Randy. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, uh, I know you have a lot of photos. We'll get to those. Yep. Um, cosmetic dentistry, what are the different categories? If you had to categorize cosmetic dentistry that you see, the type of patients? Uh, cosmetic dentistry, in my mind, is, is simply this. It's very simple. We are trying to improve somebody's smile, okay? We are trying to enhance their smile and change their smile to the smile that they maybe once had or that they maybe have always wanted. Okay. And, and, and it can vary uh, between patients because it could be as simple as bleaching their teeth. That's it. Or it could be as complex as, you know, we need to pull some teeth and place implants and do bone grafting and um, do gum tissue grafting and, and, and then crowns and veneers and all these things. It can get very complex. So cosmetic dentistry is basically this. It's basically giving the, these patients the smile that they want. Now, we should mention, by the way, and, and for people tuning in, we're talking about cosmetic dentistry. I'm not uh, endorsing you in any way on the show, but... I do think it's important that, that this is brought out, that there's really not a recognized specialty in dentistry for cosmetic dentistry. But there is an organization that's larger than any other called the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, right? Yes. You've taken this training. Yes. And there's only like a couple of guys, a handful of guys in all of Utah that have had this training. Yes. They're... And, and, I, and I'll let you talk. But I think that one of your main messages here is that if you're going to get any type of cosmetic dentistry done, that you should go to somebody that's had the a AACD training uh, for cosmetics. Mm -hmm. You know, any dentist out there can say that they do cosmetic dentistry. Um, but like you said, there's no recognized specialty for it. But there is an avenue to get the proper training to do cosmetic dentistry in a way that gives people the most natural a uh, beautiful, long-lasting smile that you can, th that they can have. And but I see veneers. I, I feel like I could spot veneers walking down the street. Or, yes. or, or like yes. the housewives of Orange County or whatever. I feel like I could see that and you've got the big bulky veneers. Is that the hands of the dentist? Or is that what people want? Because it seems like I, nobody wants those big teeth. My experience has been that people, they do not, want teeth that look fake. They just want teeth that look really good. So, you know, my goal as, as, as a dentist, as a cosmetic dentist, is to make sure that when they go out in the world, out in the street, people are saying, they have such beautiful teeth. They are the luckiest person alive <laughs> to be born with teeth like that. That is not fair. I want teeth like that. Um, I don't want them saying, oh, Oh, that person had veneers. I can see, you know, a mile away down there. They they have veneers. They they had a smile makeover. We're trying to avoid that, and 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 you'll see a lot of cases walking down the street that are like that. Do you do you see it by the way a lot? All the time, all the time. And do you um, ever? Get I, can, I can recognize it like that. I mean, maybe maybe a you know a person that's not a dentist doesn't see it that fast, but um, but you know, I think overall people can tell. People can tell when they're fake. They know when you've had something done with your teeth. We don't want that. We want them to have beautiful teeth that, that people think are really just their natural teeth. Would you say there's a lot of people that don't like their smile? The people that I see don't like their smile. The people that come to my office So it's common. Don't, it's, very it, common. It, it's very common. It's very common. Some people don't even realize, well, I think they know they don't like their, their smile, but they've kind of, over the years, kind of pushed it in the back of their mind. And no, nah, this doesn't really matter. I don't need to do anything about this. Um, it's just vanity anyway. Um, but when they come to my office, I point out, you know, look at these things that we could do. Look at how we could change this. All of a sudden, they start to light up, and they're like, yeah, <laughs> I've, I, that's what I want. I wanted this. I've been thinking about this forever, but I just, I just didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do, and um, yeah, now I want this um, because, it, because it, affects, it, it affects our life. We're not, just, we're not just making people look better, which is a part of that. You know, we're, um, we're instilling in them uh, confidence that they didn't have before. We're, um, you know, they before before they come in, they're they're kind of suppressing who they are. 
they want to get out. They want to let that person personality out. So you see but their smiles chains? holding them back. Their teeth holding them back. I mean, you see those changes. That means you give somebody like a smile or fix a gap or even just whitening. Yeah. And you see personality changes. Yes, and and I believe it's not that their personality is changing. I think it's that we're kind of unlocking that who they the, really the are. box, so they can they can become who they who they really are. They're not holding back anymore, and you know you'll see all these changes they start making after you've you've we've just done their teeth. Now they're smiling differently. There's a glow about them that's different. They change their hair. They start working out more. It affects their their life. People are more attracted to them. Um, and, and I don't just mean, you know, in a physical sense, but they have this aura about them. Well, it's they true. Seem, you know, they even seem... on, look, no, we talked on the telephone. And even on job interviews, somebody that's smiling just seems more alert, more successful, more assertive, more confident. The smile is a, is a facial expression. And it, it, it tells people what we're feeling. And if you're holding back and you're not truly smiling, people can read into that. They know when it's a fake smile versus a real <laughs> smile. And the people that are more likable are the ones that have a genuine smile. And when you have ugly, horrible, unattractive teeth, you don't want to smile. And when you don't want to smile, people see that. And so, and so it's amazing. All we're doing is changing their teeth, but it affects their whole life. It let's affects take a, how let's they Let's take a look at some of the photos. Here's a case here. This is a, or a woman uh, that came into my office. She just had these, these front teeth okay, that were discolored, kind of black and yellow and brown and things like this. And you could see this. The first time I met her was in my church. And first, I'm a dentist, and so the first time I see her, I'm like, whoa, I need to do something about those teeth. She walks uh, up to you, though. But she walked up to me. She approached me and said, she kind of told me her story. She knew I was a dentist. And she's like, you know, I think it's about time. I need to do something about this. I need to do something about this. So, you know, I had this done when I was a little kid and I broke out my front teeth. Um, and I've been living like this for years and years and years and years, but I haven't gone to the dentist to fix this. I wanted to fix it for so long, but I haven't gone because I'm so fearful. I'm so scared of going to the dentist. And this is common. There's so many people like this. Um, but she came to my office. We did sedation to make her comfortable so she doesn't remember the procedure. And in two visits, we went from these, these ugly looking teeth that she'd had for years yeah. to these beautiful, natural looking teeth. And, you know, she's wondering, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do this years ago? It's a big why, difference. why did I wait so long? This was so simple, two appointments. And, and, and that's, that's where we have her. And you look at the before and afters, and she's, she smiles different. She's more guarded on the before picture. She's more guarded. She's starting to smile well, differently. She definitely now. looks, yeah, she looks more sophisticated yes. in the after. Yes, and people aren't judging her anymore. A lot of these people don't know that people are judging them um, by by their teeth and their appearance because people don't say that to them. But people are thinking, man, what's why? Why are their teeth look like that? What's going on with them? And sometimes they're thinking, are they on drugs or something? What's what's the deal with these <laughs> with this person? And and the reality is, most of these cases aren't that. These are just regular people um, that have neglected those teeth for a long time for whatever reason that's holding them back. Um, and, and, you know, in this case, it was such a simple fix and it can literally change this woman's life. So forever is that now. your message? I mean, if you don't like your smile, do something about it. Small do, do something about it. And, 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 you know, not every case has to be this huge thing. Sometimes it's really simple. Um, sometimes all we have to do is one visit and, uh, we've enhanced that person's smile. And, and they, you're and big they, into the gums. Why? Like the gums. In fact, you called it pink aesthetics. Pink aesthetics, absolutely. So a lot of people, they think, oh, I just want white teeth. I want white teeth. I teeth white. They're only thinking about the teeth. But a lot of what makes teeth attractive is also the gums around them, uh, the gum tissue around them. If you have receding gums where you see all these yellow roots showing and, um, and they're at all different levels, they're going up and down like this. You fix that. We, we do fix that. We fix that. And if, 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 if there's a patient that needs that done, we'll do that as well. Because when they smile, a lot of times people don't just see the teeth. They see the gums with the teeth. And if there's something wrong with the gums, it doesn't matter if we redid their teeth. People are still like, oh, it doesn't look right. And so absolutely important to, to, to address uh, the gum tissue as well.
Okay, and, and this is something, by the way, at the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry, your training. I guess you've teamed up with other doctors. One of them uh, who's, who's coming on my show, Dr. Matt Webb, is also coming on the show. That you've created this uh, thing in Utah where, where it all, I guess I could, I could mention, on our conversations on the phone, it's like you're starting like, a, like a, a study club or something to get the word out that, hey, if you're going to get cosmetic dentistry done, go to somebody with the training. Is that right? Uh, absolutely. I'm summing it up a little bit. I mean, uh, that's our goal is we want people to know because people don't know. They just go to the dentist down the street and every dentist puts on their sign, cosmetic dentistry, almost every dentist. Yeah. Um, but the vast majority of them don't really, they, they don't go into the proper training and they don't spend the time. Because they're not um, to, into it. I mean, in all fairness, I mean, it's not he, always a person's focus. They're not, it's not always their focus. They don't, they don't, and if they don't care about it as much, then they're not going to do as good of a job. Okay. You want to go to somebody that is, is a perfectionist. Somebody's like, I just want to make these look perfect. And somebody that uh, is interested in learning all the skills, all the techniques necessary to make it just perfect. And uh, that's what we're trying to do in Utah, is, is educate the public, say, hey, look, you know, not all dentists are the same when it comes to cosmetic dentistry. Um, there's a few dentists here on this list okay. that are involved with the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. And they're, you know, It doesn't they, cost more to go to somebody, even though it's not a recognized specialty, but this is your focus, is just cosmetic this, stuff. This is, this is my focus. Both low-end and high-end cosmetic stuff. Low-end, high-end, whatever we need to do to give those patients the smile that they, that they want and what that if, they deserve. What if your mouth is a disaster, like bad gums, bleeding gums, loose teeth? Are you equipped to handle that? A absolutely. So we get those cases, too. The peop these, these people, they, they, they think they're too far gone. What can I do? You know, what can I do? Um, and... I've, I've had extra training, because a lot of these patients, they, they need to have a lot of oral surgery procedures done. I've had an extra year of training in an oral surgery internship after dental school to learn how to do a lot of, a lot of things that need to be done, like bone grafting and gum tissue grafting and uh, dental implants and all of that, to take these cases, uh, these people that come in to that level um, that are in this state of crisis, I guess you could say, um, and restore them and give them the smile that they've always wanted as well, or that they used to have. Who should get this done? Who should get cosmetic dentistry or a smile makeover? Uh, everybody that feels like they need it. So if you don't <laughs> Any, like their smile. Anybody that doesn't like their smile. And it can be the smallest thing to the biggest thing. It, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, my goal in my practice is to is to take anybody in any state that they're at with their teeth and beautify their smile, make a long-lasting, natural-looking smile. Um, I have some other cases okay, I can show let's you. Take a look. Let's is that take okay? A look. Here's here's a woman that she had had cosmetic dentistry done already. Um, so this is her before photo. This is her before photo, and it's pretty good. It's, yes, Randy, but. She, she didn't like it. She told me she didn't like her teeth. And she said even when she first got those on, she's like, something's wrong with this. I don't like how they look. I don't like how my teeth are biting on them. And um, she, she told me over time, this gap, this gap wasn't here. This gap wasn't here before, and now it's here. She, she told me, she said, hey, look, these look too bulky, too big. And I said, you're absolutely right. They're too big. They're too bulky. When I look at you, all I see is teeth. I don't want to see teeth. I want to see your smile. I want to see your smile. I want something that looks like you. I don't want to see teeth. I want to see your smile. And in her, all I see is teeth. So what we did is we took those bulky crowns and veneers off. All we right. redid them. And you can see in the after picture, there's a huge difference. It's I don't subtle, see, but it is huge. You're right. I mean, I don't see teeth anymore. She has beautiful teeth now, but I don't see the teeth. I just see that she's happy, that she's smiling. I like this person. I like this person. She looks younger. There's and they so look many, like real teeth, by the way. I'm they, not trying to they, side with you. People need to know. I'm not trying to side with you. But I feel like I always could spot veneers, the big teeth. So in this before photo, those were big. Mm -hmm. So what did you do that was different than the person that did this before you? 
That means why One day, so when deers I, not look big is what I'm trying to figure out. So when I took those crowns off, I realized these teeth are not prepared properly to to give her the kind of teeth that makes her smile beautiful. Meaning you have to kind of uh, shape the teeth you underneath. Have to, yes, you have okay. to you have to shape the teeth, you have to prepare the teeth. And I realized, you know what, the lab guy that made these these veneers, he was limited. He was limited. You have to have a certain thickness of material um, for the teeth to be strong enough. And he was limited on where he could put those, those teeth. So she ended up walking away with teeth that are too bulky and that, that don't look right. So, we so when a, she sees herself in the mirror for the first time, what's that like? So when these patients, it's, a, it's amazing. They, they're stunned when they look in the mirror at first. And then, and then the tears start coming. I mean, they're tears of joy. They're, they're ecstatic about this. They're, they can't believe that they can't believe that they look the way they do now. I mean, they feel like they're who they are now. That, that, that's, that's the big take home here. They feel like they're who they are. Um, whereas before, they're like, this is not me. This is not me. I don't want this. This is not me. So do you ever look at on a consult and say, and in your mind, you're going, this is going to be good. Like where you get excited. I, I, absolutely. I see, I see a person and, and, and these, these, these people, they can't see it. They can't see it. But I can see the end result. And I can just imagine in my mind, this is going to look amazing. This is going to change everything about how they look um, in a positive way. Um, the patient doesn't know it until we finally get the end result. Um, and then they start going out. And sometimes they don't even realize how good their teeth look <laughs> right away until they start getting compliments here and there. You know, it starts with one, then two. And, and then eventually people are saying, your teeth are so beautiful. I, I, and, and then... Then once they get to that point, after so many compliments, now they're smiling huge, you know, they're uh, all the way to their ears. And um, uh, that, that confidence that they lacked, it's now there again. Are you ever surprised, by the way? That means as far as the changes in their self-confidence when it's all done? At this point, I'm not surprised anymore because it's just all too common. It's just with all these cases, it's 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 the same way over and over and over and over again. Um, they, a lot of these patients, they don't realize what they didn't have, and now they're like, I, you know, look what I have now. I, I can't believe I lived all those years like that without these teeth. Let me show you this other patient. This all is right. this is this is an amazing transformation, and this is, this is a guy, that. There's a lot of guys out there like this. This guy's a CPA, okay? But his, his teeth were in this devastated state. There's a lot of guys out there, lawyers, doctors. So they have the money, but they do nothing. They, they have the money, and for whatever reason, they're too busy with life, whatever, whatever they're doing. They finally get to this age where they're retired. They're like, oh my gosh, look at my, my teeth are in the worst state ever. I need to do something about that. And that's this guy. He comes in. He can hardly even smile. You look in this before picture, you yeah. can hardly even smile. He's, yeah. hol he's holding back. Um, um, and, you know, here's a case where we had to do a lot of stuff. He's a very complex case. We had to do implants and things like that. But the end result, you look at the end result, and you can see such a difference in how he's smiling. He looks happy. Yeah. He, looks, he looks like the CPA that he is. Whereas in the before picture, you would judge him and say, who is this guy? Is this guy? Is he looks guy so tired in the. Uh, he, he looks. He looks tired. He's. He, he just doesn't look happy. He looks much older, um, and now he looks like I think who who he really is. So who and does not, this? Is it more women, more men that are coming in for cosmetic dentistry? You know, you would you would think it was more women, but I surprisingly get a lot of men too. I'd say it's about it's about equal. So the men put it, it doesn't off just, longer, by the way. Men like wait until they can't eat or they're in pain. Yes, it, it's a little bit different with men. A lot of times, it's a functionality thing. I can't chew anymore. I can't eat more. They say they don't care about how they look. They always say that. Do they? Well, I don't care how I. You know, it doesn't matter how I look. I just want to be able to chew again. But then it's amazing. Once you give them those beautiful teeth, that beautiful smile, they're like, "Yes, I love this." <laughs> Good. And sometimes they they won't show that. You know, men are a little bit. They hold back a little bit. They don't want to show emotion. But, you know, sometimes you can see them walking outside. <laughs> They're happy. Yeah. Okay. So. Do people tend to, like, make big changes like this the, because of an occasion? Yes. You know, something comes up in their life where they're like, I need to look good. It could be a wedding. It could be um, some 
some kind of anniversary, some some kind of occasion, whatever it is, um, they realize, wait a minute, my teeth don't look the way I want them to look. I need them to look good for this. And so, yeah, that happens all the time, all the time. Now you're a dentist. You probably think that the smile's like the most important thing. I do think it's one of the most important things, but I, I don't think that's just limited to dentists. I think a lot of people think it's the most important thing. I mean, it's how we, it's how we express joy and um, happiness. It's, uh, we show charisma. I mean, when you, no matter what you're doing in life, no matter what aspect of life, you're interacting with people. You have relationships with people. Okay, whether it's romantic, whether it's business, uh, no matter what you do, people, if you, if you smile in the right way, if your smile is natural and looks beautiful, yeah. you're more likely to get hired in a job. Uh, you're more likely to find uh, a mate that likes you. Um, people tend to think that uh, people that smile, um, uh, smile big and, uh, and natural are more trustworthy. I mean, just look at presidential candidates. Yeah. You know, usually, usually the guys that win, I mean, can smile. It's, they they can That's smile. A good point. They can talk, and they and there's something trusting about that. When people hold back and they don't smile, you're kind of guarded. You're skeptical about this person. Who are they? What you know? What's wrong with them? But when they truly, genuinely smile, um, they're more likable. They're more likable. Okay, good. Now, for people just tuning in, we're talking about cosmetic dentistry, and you're one of the just a handful. You know, maybe one to five guys in all of Utah that have been trained by the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. It's not a recognized specialty, but this is your focus. I mean, this is all you want to do, right? This is, this From is- small things to big things. Yes, this is all that, this is my main interest. This is all that I want to do. Way. Yes. <laughs> if people are too, I know your age and, and you look at least 10 years younger than <laughs> yeah. you really are. Yep. But- uh, And I get that all the time, by the way. Oh, what uh, do they say? Because they say likes they, dentist, they, right? they come in, they say, wait a minute, you're my dentist? I, I, and I just tell them, I say, hey, look, Dookie Hauser, he's a genius, right? Yeah. Genius doctor, so that's me. But no, really, I'm older than I look. But You know, one of the questions that, that, that I know you wanted me to ask you or, or, or talk about was patchwork dentistry, that you don't want to be known as a person that just does patchwork. And there's a lot of patchwork going on. I know you didn't want to be negative, uh, but in yeah. particular, something about filling material is being used to fill in places where it shouldn't. Tell me about that. Oh, let me tell you about a patient that came in okay. the other day. Okay. She comes in the other day and we do an exam. I'm looking around. She has all these old crowns everywhere in her mouth. And on almost every single crown, there's these little patched fillings. And, and what that is- Where, is at the top or the at, bottom? At the margin of the crown. So what happens is you have where the crown meets the tooth and that you can get decay in there. And so a quick fix, a simple fix, which I think is more like a Band-Aid fix, is you put a little filling. You take out the decay and put a little filling at the margin. Uh, margin but, meaning by the gum line? Or by where? the gum line, okay. by the gum line where the crown, the crown margin is, where that decay was. Okay. okay. But the thing is, it doesn't last very long. And this woman comes in, and I'm looking around her teeth, and everywhere she has decay, there's these little patched fillings. And I'm thinking to myself, this is one of those people that, you know, when you tell them the best option would be to replace this crown, they're like, well, is there something, you know, cheaper? Is there, is there an easier option, um, less expensive option? And you say, well, we could just take out the decay and put a little patch filling in there, but it's not the greatest thing. Anyway, she had all these things in there, and I was thinking that this is one of these patients. But I presented the case to her. I said, look, this is the best thing to do. We need to replace all these crowns. And in the process, we're going to make your smile amazing. We're going to make it beautiful. What did she say? And, and she, she said to me, she's like, you know what? I didn't even know I had these patch fillings in, in my mouth. You know, if I would have known that that's what, you know, these dentists were giving me, um, if, if I would have known the other option to do a crown, I would have just done the, the crown. That's what I w would rather have. And so what's interesting to me is it's amazing that, you know, these patients aren't giving, being given the options. What's to, cheaper in the long run, though? My, so my opinion is, you know, it takes a couple of years, two or three years, and you're seeing decay around these patched, patched fillings already. And at that point, it, you know, you tell the patient, look, we just need to put a new crown on it. So in the long run, they're paying for all the patched fillings and then new crowns down the road anyway. So why not just, in my opinion, we're saving them money by doing it right in the first place. You get something that's long lasting, that looks good. Um, as, you know, the patches just, they're not good. Okay, not so good. With, with veneers, and we're short on time, take me through the process. Okay, so a patient comes in, they don't like their smile, 
and maybe they self-diagnose, right? Is, is that what most people do? They say, I want veneers. Do they know what they want these days because of the internet or whatever? Yes, they okay. say, I want veneers. That's, so that's what is what that, what, what's that like? Like, how do they know? Take me through that process in a couple of minutes. So uh, the process is they come in. Um, we usually initially, first appointment, we're gonna talk to this patient. We're gonna learn everything about them. Who are they? What's their personality? What do they want? What are they looking for? What kind of teeth do they want? We need to make sure that we're giving the patient what they want, what they're imagining in their All mind. Right. Sometimes we have to help them along the way, you know. I think this would look the best on you. You show we'll, them pictures we'll show them, of what's possible? Yes, we'll, we'll show them a bunch of cases that we've already done. Say, so, you know, your smile's kind of like this. We could make it look like this. And a lot of times, you know, the patients are like, I want teeth like that. That looks amazing. <laughs> That's what I want. And so we start to get this idea of what the patient wants. Um, and then, you know, there, there will be a middle period um, where we maybe do a mock-up even in their mouth. Like a trial? Like a trial, Smile, kind yeah. Of a like it, before we cement on the permanent veneers, then we put on this trial mock-up, uh, temporary compositor or, or temporaries, and they look in the mirror and they say, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is exactly what I was looking for. This is what I want. So right from there, we know we're gonna give them what they want with the permanents. Then we sent out to the lab. The lab guys make the beautiful aesthetic porcelain veneers. We cement them on, and now we don't have to worry, and the patient doesn't have to worry anymore about what they're leaving with. They don't go home and look in the mirror and go, Man, that's not, not what I wanted. So they get to see it in advance. So now yeah. they have their porcelains and now their life uh, improves. Their whole life is better. <laughs> I'm kidding about that, but uh, you feel that way. No, their, their, whole, their whole life changes because you've got you've to consider who these people were before. They were really holding themselves back. They're holding okay. themselves back. They weren't, uh, they weren't smiling. They weren't, so they, now they are. Uh, and now they're smiling. And so like we talked about, because they're, they look happy and they smile genuinely, all their interactions with people and relationships have changed now uh, for what I think is the better. So, yes, you may say I'm just a dentist and these are, you know, I'm just, it's just teeth. They're only teeth. But it really does, in my experience, affect these people's lives after we change their teeth. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Good job, hey, by the way. Thanks, Randy. They can it's go to your website, here. take a look at the take a look at your photos there. Take a look at the before, before and afters. You um, do sedation. Uh, you do it all right there under one roof. We do it all right there under one roof. Okay. Uh, we're seeing the cases from start to finish. Always, always keeping in mind, we always have in our mind what the end result's going to look like. So no matter what we have to do, no matter how far gone you are or how little it is, we can improve your smile. Okay, good. You've been watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.